And I grew up from the age of 2 to 12 in Hastings-on-the-Hudson in Westchester County. Then he was transferred back to Albany, our hometown, and where relatives lived. And uh, I went to high school in Albany. There were, four, you know, four years remaining. And that uh, after high school, I went to uh, Syracuse University. What did your father do for a living? He was an attorney for AT&T. And what do you think about you being an artist? All for it. That's great. We had artist friends, and they were uh, successful artists, and uh, and they knew I had an artistic ability. I never had any art training in high school or anything, or grammar school, but I liked to draw, and my stuff was pretty good, and they knew talent. But they insisted on my family that I go to college. I should have a college education plus art. Uh, Syracuse University was the only college around that offered that. I went to a very tough prep school, Ivy League. You graduated from my private high school, you could go anywhere in the United States. But I still could never pass chemistry. What's the first professional work you sold? Well, I think it was a chapter heading for Street and Smith. Pulp. And did you work for the Pulps for a while? Yeah, it was scattered. I'd pick up Pulps' job now and then. How'd you get into the comic book business? I was struggling along there doing a Pulp heading now and then. It was getting into the fall, you know, and I was beginning to say, the hell with this. I've been walking the streets of about a year and a half, and there's only two alternatives. One was to work your way up through the Pulps or work in one of these art service things. Everything was 15 bucks a week. Uh, but I bought the Sunday paper, and I read the Help Wanted ads, male artist or artist, period. Didn't have to look too far. And there was an ad for uh, artist to show up at this place around the corner that would, could do black and white drawings. I went there, and it was Harry Chesler. I went in, and I talked to him. I showed him I had done a bunch of pulp magazine chapter headings. I had these black and white drawings. But he did have a room full of artists, maybe a dozen or so at desks, uh, drawing pages. And I could look at the, what they were doing, and I, I knew I could do whatever stuff they were doing. And he liked my work, tried to get a salary out of him, and he wanted to pay me 15 but I got him to 20 So we shook and I was hired. Then started drawing comic book pages, only I didn't have the faintest idea of what they were doing or what they were for, other than it was up my alley, Wild West Detective. And that night, after I was through work and I had a few minutes, I called my folks back in Albany and said I'd finally had a job, 20 bucks a week. I was drawing cowboys and Indians. They had the need to send me to college for that. I went on from there. I loved that stuff. You did a lot of covers for the early DC magazines, uh, New Fun and, and Adventure. Did you have fun doing that stuff? Yeah, I liked all that stuff I did. I really enjoyed it. But how did you get to work at DC? Well, I was working at Chester's studio, and through that I met other artists, and they worked for this guy named Major Nicholson, and I went over and saw him and his guys, and that's how I met Sullivan and Flessel. They worked interchangeable. They were guys who worked for Chester, and freelance for Nicholson. As artists, we were all all together on it. And the best friend I made when I was over there at uh, Nicholson would be uh, Vin Sullivan, see? We got to be good friends. And here was Nicholson putting out a, had a stable of comics, and, and Chester had a stable of comics. And we're trying to get comic books on the stands. At that point, they had this fellow, Donenfeld, in the city of New York. He was a guy with money to gamble on this stuff. He had just been um, kicked out of business by Mayor LaGuardia. Donenfeld put out these girly magazines. He had to scrap the girly magazines and find something else to do. He went and bought these comics from Major Nicholson. That was fun, detective, and adventure. By this time, I was pretty close with Sullivan and them, and I agreed to go along with Sullivan. This Donenfeld put money into the comics, meaning to get him on the stands and make a go of it. And he wanted a fourth magazine, which we called Action Comics. Uh, so this was the four magazines that Donenfeld had. And, uh, well, you can say he was a, a publisher at that time, would be a gambler. 
putting out this stuff. There's a lot of money involved. There was a lot of gangster stuff. Getting your magazines shown where people could buy them. Distribution. Things like that. <clears throat> yeah. I got desk space. See, I, by this time, I was from upstate. I had a hotel room. I didn't have a real studio or anything. So Sullivan, he went up and worked, and we started putting out the magazines for Donenfeld, which Donahue he had bought from the major. They gave me the office space to draw there, too. Only I was on a freelance basis, but I was handy. I mean, when... Uh, Siegel and Schuster later on arrived when Siegel was often sick and I, I did his Superman covers for him, you know. We were all good friends. I was there when Siegel and Schuster showed up from Cleveland with their uh, Superman comic line. We were trying to sell them. They sold it to uh, a Donenfeld. And that's when they started Action Comics. They put Superman in the front. That had me do a magician strip in the back called Zatara. Did you freelance for any other companies in those days when you were there? No, I didn't have enough time. I had all I could do to churn out that stuff. I, I still had connections with the pulps, and I would get calls now and then to do a chapter heading, a five-buck deal, and I would do it. Uh, but it wasn't comics or anything. Do you like doing continuity stories, comic book stories? Yeah. I enjoyed it. Did you write any stories or did you just draw from other scripts? I did both. Most of the time when I got a story to do, they handed me a script done by a writer or otherwise they tell me to write it myself, which meant uh, submitting a story and, and no big problem. I could write. Did you get extra money for the page rate? You generally would for that. Yeah, the page rate then wasn't much. Five, six. You know, when you get up to seven and eight, you were doing pretty good. You really had to do a page a day to exist. And to do a page a day, you had to really do a page and a half a day because you lost days. When I brought work into the city to submit and get paid, that was a day gone. I took a day off to go fishing or something. That was a day lost. To make a figure your salary on the page rate, my day was probably from 9 to 9. What the hell? I liked it. You worked for quality. You worked for a lot of people. Gleason, Hillman. Oh, yeah. Chesler, Fiction House. Everyone that I've talked to has worked for Fiction House sometime. I don't know what I did for them. Spy Fighter, Quality. You worked for Quality. You worked for Quality during the war years. Yeah, I like Quality. How'd you they like Busy me. Arnold? They paid me pretty well. I liked Arnold, yeah. He paid very well. I was with him until I was drafted. Did you do any work in the service when you got drafted? Oh, yeah. Is yeah. there anything that you really remember mostly from the old days? The lessons you learned from it, the friendships you built? Friends like... Uh, Sullivan and Craig Flessel, guys that I work with, that always stay with you. I, did you ever think this business was going to last for as long as it did? Oh, I, I wasn't sure. I knew there was something magic about comics. But then it was, of course, television was a big competitor, and that kind of knocked the business because magazines that came out and were sold out in a month. They, now they took two or three months to sell out because the kids were watching TV. But as you can see, the uh, comics still draw. People like that kind of thing. It's a pretty good medium. I was made aware of that because I'm from New York, and I was transferred out here to live, and I'm stuck with uh, a blood pressure, prostate cancer, and all this crap. And uh, my doctor thought comic magazines were the greatest thing in this world. He said he, he came to this country in 1952, as a baby with his parents, right? And he had no trouble assimilating, going to school and like that. But he said that when he read a comic magazine, it, it told him everything. He said the, the reading was like it was, and the picture was like it was. He said he learned English so fast from a comic book, it wasn't even funny.